What's up guys, welcome back to Barf Life Report. Today we are, as you can see, tasting bottled cocktails. Uh, I got three different brands here that I picked up from different areas in the city, uh, available here. And uh, you know, cocktail, bottled cocktails are all the rage these days. Uh, everyone's trying to figure out how to make craft cocktails just a lot more um, convenient, right? So the question is, am I gonna lose my job to these? Am I gonna lose my job to these cocktails? I have never actually had a very good bottled cocktail and uh, I don't hold out a lot of hope uh, for these. Um, I picked, okay, so there's a couple of ways that bottled cocktails come. There are those bottled cocktails that come with alcohol included and there are those that come without alcohol included. Marius actually encountered some of these like mixers in the store where it's like the old fashioned mixer, just add bourbon. And what did you say about that, Marius? What's the point? You might as well just add all the ingredients, right? Right, I mean, if you're gonna have to, Especially I mean, the old fashioned one. I mean, yeah. I mean, wouldn't you say though that just putting two ingredients together would be more convenient than having to like muddle sugar and put the bitters? If you just had it all in just two batches going like that. Yeah. Or, or I mean like, I don't know. For me, it's like, all of this is lazy for me. For me, it's like, let's just make some good cocktails. I just want to enjoy my cocktails. The point of, of drinking a cocktail is to really enjoy it. Uh, not necessarily to just have it be the easiest thing possible. So these better be good. I don't have a lot of hope for them though, I gotta say. All right, so these ones are from a new company uh, called Drinksmith and they have a really novel approach to the bottled cocktail. Uh, they are basically billing themselves as the world's first fresh cocktail in a bottle. Uh, I have been explained the technology behind this. We will talk through it for sure. It is a very interesting idea. And then the smart thing that they did was that they um, partnered up with a bunch of uh, very well-known bartenders in Los Angeles uh, to make the cocktail mixes inside. So uh, you've got Syed House, Cocktails by Hawk, Charity, uh, Charity K. I actually, Charity K. Johnson is the, I don't, I don't know this, know her, but I know her kind of by reputation. Richard Allison's also very well-known. Bad Birdie, at Bad Birdie on Instagram. Uh, she's got a huge following. And then uh, Jason F.U., who we did the Art of the Side Hustle with Jack Daniels with. So if you were watching our uh, our feed, our uh, Instagram stories or our Instagram feed. I did this kind of cool art of the side hustle event with Jack Daniels. Jason F.U. was part of it. And the last time I mentioned, or the first time I mentioned Jason's name to Marius, Marius was like, wait, he did like a double take on the the fact that it was like Jason, middle, middle uh, initial F and then U, right? Yep. Because? Uh, yeah, just caught me by surprise, I guess. <laughs> because, well, because it's because like it's 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 a little too convenient. So, what's the story behind it, Marius? I, I heard that you heard this. Like, you talked to Jason about the story. I thought he said that somebody accidentally put the F, added an F to his middle name, and then he said, "Oh, that was funny. I'll do that." And I'll just do that. You know what? I was a kind of arguing the like I was saying that. He intentionally put the F in there because he just has kind of a wacky sense of humor and he thought it would be kitschy for Instagram. And he, he has a really nice Instagram account. Um, uh, he makes lots of great cocktails and stuff. And so he just thought it would be kind of catchy. But I, 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 maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I think you might be right on this. I'll ask him again. I'll ask him again. I mean, obviously we're not gonna know for this video, but you know, I'll ask him again just to, just to, just, just I'm for sure he'll comment sense. if he's watching. Yeah. If he's watching. Yeah, if he's watching, he can definitely comment. All right, so uh, the ice is melting, so let's get into this. I'm assuming that these don't have dilution added. This one actually says pour over ice, and this one says pour over ice. So I'm assuming that they don't have, like these definitely don't have dilution. These ones uh, are a whole different story, uh, but I'm assuming that these ones also don't have dilution. But I looked on their label and on their website and couldn't find anything about dilution here. No, there's nothing, there's nothing like, it doesn't even say like, it says serve up or on the rocks. So that's not helpful at all. Yeah. Because if you serve it up, then are you pre-chilling it because there's dilution or are you like stirring it and then pouring it, on, pouring it up? I would think you put it in the freeze, on the fridge and then serve it cold, drink it. I think, that th this needs dilution. I don't think there's any, any water in here. 
I think that these need to be, that's why it says pour over rocks and that's why it says serve up around the rocks, you need to stir it. All right, uh, so which one should we try first? These ones I kind of want to try last actually because um, there's a whole bunch of them. There's only two of these, so. I, Marius wanted me to do old fashioned glasses for the old fashioned, so we're gonna do that. Um, but let's start with this. Uh, this is, uh, okay, sorry, this is, uh, it's called On the Rocks Premium Cocktails. We found this at Whole Foods. Uh, it is from Bardstown, Kentucky. On the Rocks Premium Cocktails uh, from Bardstown, Kentucky. It is made with tequila, triple sec, and natural flavors. That's a big red flag right there, just FYI. Natural flavors is just a very general term that doesn't actually mean anything. Kind of like when, when you know, there are liquor companies that say artisanal, but the, the actual definition for artisanal is so broad that they can say that even if they're sourcing their liquor from like MGP. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's anything fresh in here. Let's taste it and find out. The question is, is it good? I guess, is it fresh is a different question, right? It's, well, it's not fresh because it's bottled, but yeah. Well, right, but does it taste fresh? Like, would, th would this be a contender for a fresh right. Like, Could you, could you be served cocktail? this and somebody would think you made it? Right. That should be the bar, right? That should be the bar, yeah, absolutely, 100%. If it's putting me out of a job, Pun that better be the bar. not intended. What? Huh? What did you say? I said pun not intended. Oh, why? What was the pun? That should be it. the bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, went, yeah it like momentarily just went over my head. All right, let's taste it. Boozy. Okay. I'm really sorry on the rocks, but this tastes like somebody put tequila in a glass and then put like a high C, like a, a, a what is it that, uh, that, uh, that those vitamin C packets that you used to, when we used to. Emergency? Emergency inside here. Like a lemon emergency with booze is what it tastes like. Question is this. If I didn't feel like making a cocktail and it was in the fridge, would I drink it? Not, is it good, but would I drink it? It's got this very weird bitter aftertaste, um, almost like they're utilizing like uh, lime peel in there, but like the pith part of the peel. And it kind of gives it like a medicinal aftertaste, which is not a contender. All right, okay. Uh, so then we're gonna do the old fashioned uh, from the same company. I mean, this should be a home run because the, there's should nothing be a, to it. Right, because the thing is, is that all you need is simple syrup. Doesn't really go bad. I mean, it does, I guess, but in small amounts, it doesn't really go bad. Uh, booze and bitters. That's it. Sugar, bitters, booze. That's all you have in here. So, And 98% of it, 99% uh, of it right. is booze. So, yeah. And 99% of it. Yeah, so I'm going to just wipe that off real quick. It should be a home run. I'm just going to give us a little stirry poo. All right. Not bad, not bad. I make a better old fashioned. This is not a contender for a fresh old, like a, like a just made old fashioned, but I'm not mad at it. I would drink this. I could drink this. But if somebody served it to you and you didn't see them pouring it out of a bottle, would you uh, buy it? It's a little off balance, personally. I mean, like if somebody, if I went to a bar and somebody was like, like into a glass, right? And then was like, here's your old fashioned, sir. And they spritz the, you know, because we didn't do any of the garnishes. And the thing is, is that what does this have in it? Does this actually, yes, they actually put orange and cherry and lemon zest flavors into here. Hmm. So they're trying to account for the fresh peels, which I think is a mistake. Even the cherry. Even the cherry, yeah. They put a little cherry juice in there probably, which I think that's a mistake. I honestly think that's a mistake. Why not just like pour it over ice and then just do the garnishing, right? And then you have those fresh oils would, would enhance this big time. Because then you have to have the... Lemon. Right. I guess it kind of defeats the point because you kind of defeats the point because the whole point is to be able to just pour it over ice, like stir it with your finger. Not many. Put people. on uh, Vanderpump Rules and and uh, well or 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 Game of Thrones if that's your thing. I don't know. Um, uh, Anika's been watching 
uh, Vanderpump Rules a lot. I've been watching it with her quite a bit. And I heard actually that uh, the Ariana Maddox and Tom Sandoval came out with their own cocktail book and I'm kinda, kinda keen to try those cocktails. So we might pick up that book. Why are you looking at me like that? Be honest about what? <laughs> okay, truth be told, grudgingly, I, okay, I have a little bit of a connection to the show because I work at a bar called Coles, you guys know that, but then also there's a character on the show named, well, there's a, a woman on the show named Katie and her brother used to be a regular at my bar. Uh, and so I know him and, and I remember when I was like referencing the show and he's like, why are you watching that? <laughs> I don't know. It's a little bit of a guilty pleasure. All right. Don't look at me like that. It's okay. It's a little bit of a guilty pleasure. I got caught. All right. You shouldn't be home. You should be out of here. All right. Let's try the other old fashioned. So this is another company. It's called BTL SVC. That's the millennial spelling of bottle service. It's a terrible name. B bottle service. Yeah. I don't know. I hope millennials don't get offended by what I just said, but um, crafted with bourbon whiskey. Doesn't tell you which kind. At least they they tell you that Knob Creek is in here, which is I think they're using that as a selling point. Same way they say that Hornitos is in here, using that as a selling point. So crafted with bourbon whiskey, cane sugar, bitters, and citrus oil, but doesn't tell you what kind of citrus oil. Doesn't tell. It tells you bourbon, but it doesn't tell you what bourbon. It tells you citrus oil, but it doesn't tell you what what citrus is. Um, I, I got this at a place called Bristol Farms. Uh, I looked on their website. I don't know. It's, it seemed, you know, handcrafted premium cocktails with somebody's signature. Somebody's right, signature, but I don't know who already. that is. What? We have like five more, six more. Come on. I know. It's, I know. The, 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 this can easily be a long video. There is nothing quick about these ready-made cocktails. Ironically. Mm -hmm. Ooh, better. Much better. And look at the difference there. One looks like the but real deal. But this still kind of has a medicinal aftertaste. I don't know if it's just me or like, a, like I don't know if I'm just, I don't know if I'm just against these in theory. And so, you know, I don't know, but it's, it still has like a, my first impression is better. I just wish they didn't put the citrus in there. I kind of feel like the citrus sort of gives it a weird taste hmm. because this, on first, I'm like, better. And then I'm like, kind of tastes like there's somebody put an orange Tic Tac in there. Right. Which, you know, you don't want your old fashioned to taste that way. Um, I don't know if I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just being honest. Obviously, none of, nobody here has been, uh, is sponsoring this video. They got paid, actually. Huh? They got paid. They got paid, yeah, because we bought all this stuff at the store. Okay, we're doing a 1934 Cosmo. So here's where I have a problem with this. It says 1934 Cosmo. 1934 Cosmo is a gin cocktail. They are making it with vodka here. Uh, dry curacao, raspberry gum syrup, which, ah, this is the thing. So this is the problem with bottled cocktails, especially when you're doing citrusy cocktails, is that it has, you know, elements that are gonna go bad. And what they actually did is they turned the raspberry into a gum syrup, all right, to preserve it so that it wouldn't, go bad. The question is, is it going to be too sweet? Because it also has uh, dry curacao in it and, and the citrus oils that we don't know what they are. All right. No, I mean, it's, it's not a contender for a fresh cocktail. It definitely tastes like a bottled cocktail. Are these things so unpalatable that you can't drink them? Of course not. They're, they, like, I don't know. I mean, I could just sit in the couch and be like, eh, I'll drink this. Um, but it's not the contender for, it's not putting me out of a job. That's for darn sure. All right. I think we can kind of just like put these aside and get to these. All right. So these drinksmith things, this is kind of how they work. Okay. So basically the citrus in here is fresh and it's packed under pressure. It's like, it's like, pre it's like pressurized. And when I asked the guy, like when I asked the owner of the company sort of like how it's made, basically it's pressured in the same way that water puts pressure on there. It's not gas pressured. It's not air pressured, right? There's no gas and there's no bubbles. There's no CO2 or anything like that. It's basically, they pack it under pressure. And when you do that, when you like, I guess, take citrus and pack it under like heavy, heavy pressure, you can actually keep it good for a few months. The, 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 the not the problem, but the, 
The catch with this is that you have to keep them cold. They have to be in the fridge or they will go bad. So they'll stay good as long as you, uh, as long as you keep them in the fridge. The other thing is that these are made up of two chambers. The top chamber has the booze. The, bo the, the top chamber has like the booze and cocktail mix and the bottom chamber has the citrus. So when you want to drink it, what you do is you twist it like that and then shake it like that. And then you have completely, you're gonna see it more dramatically here because that is obviously bourbon and then your citrus, probably honey mix. So you do that and then you open it and then you've got like a nice, you even got a little aeration right there in the citrus. So let's see. Not bad, pretty darn good. This is their classic margarita with Blanco tequila, fresh lime, orange liqueur, uh, agave syrup, and salt drops. Uh, and I can taste that saline. This is, yeah, I like saline. I like a saline drop in a margarita because it really brings the flavors out. You know, that's, you, know you don't have to have the salt on the rim. Sometimes the salt on the rim is a little too much. It's pretty good. Question is, can they do it again? So this is uh, the east side. So an east side is uh, Jim, cucumber, lime. Uh, I said Jim. I yeah, I heard. Gin, cucumber, lime, uh, cane sugar, and then mint infused water. So I'm assuming the you know, cocktail mix is down there. Booze is up here. Let's give it a little twist and shake. I kind of like the twist and shake thing. It kind of gives it like a little... It's easy and it gives it a little bit of a ritual to do before you drink it. Not, I mean, I gotta say, second time, not bad. You really got that cucumber mint ra ratio with gin down. It's pretty balanced. If you got served this in a glass, it didn't see the bottle. <clears throat> What would you say? I would say it's not fresh. It's a bottled cocktail, but I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I would drink it. That's what I would say. Hands down. So then the ginger drop. This is uh, Richard Allison. What we got here? Vodka infused with fresh ginger. Lemon juice. So basically a lemon drop with ginger. Uh, ginger juice, cane sugar, Jamaican bitters. And I have a little island spice to it. I love this twist and shake thing, though. I got to tell you. It's kind of genius. I love it. All right. Again, not bad. I mean, I'm just assuming that the rest of these are gonna be really good. I don't know what more I have to say about it. I mean, it all tastes representational of the flavors that they put on the label for sure. Um, I mean, I can tell that it's not a freshly made cocktail. Um, you have been really wanting to do a test on bottled citrus versus fresh citrus. Mm -hmm. Can you tell the difference? I'm telling you right now, as these are utilizing fresh citrus, I think I'd be able to tell between bottled and fresh for sure. I think so. Okay. I do. Um, so the rum punch, uh, so this is the bad birdie one with bananas, fresh pineapple, coconut syrup, fresh lime, tincture, mint infused water. Sounds good. Shake it. Not no, no. the banana, banana and coconuts really, really prevalent there. So it yeah, like, I mean, all of these are really good. Hmm? Does it taste like a fresh real banana, or is that like kind of like the sweeter artificial banana? No, I mean it. It tastes like banana. I don't know if it, t honestly, dude, I, I don't know if I have like a flavor, like artificial banana. What does artificial banana taste? I don't know. Supposedly the artificial banana tastes more like the actual original banana, they say. I mean, quite honestly, it's like a very little bit of banana. The coconut is what's most prevalent in this. Um, and then they also did like a mint infused water, which I don't know if I'm really getting a lot of the mint there, but. I'm really keen to try their citrus though. Cause I wonder what packing it 
under pressure and then keeping it for months and months does. Well, it's probably like, um, you know, there's parts of the ocean that's like very deep, high pressured oxygen deprived where things don't really rot and decompose. Right, right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. But I, w I just wonder how that tastes compared to something just freshly juiced compared to something that's in a bottle. You know what I mean? It's almost like you have three different types of citrus. You've got like the freshly juiced citrus. Then you've got this citrus, which is fresh citrus that's been packed under pressure. And then you have like bottled citrus that's just been, I don't know, it's got all sorts of, you know, uh, it has all sorts of preservatives in it to keep it sort of fresh tasting, I guess. Hmm. Um, but definitely oxidized. If it's, if there's even a speck of real lime juice, it's oxidized because lime juice oxidizes immediately. The other thing that I would say about this, I kind of wish that the labels were a little smaller because I think that part of the fun of this would be to see it mix. Now, for something like the, like, like especially with something like this, because it's so dramatic in color and you're going to see it kind of mix. I just think that that would be kind of a fun thing. I don't know how they would get all of this information on a smaller label unless it was just like teeny. So maybe it's not possible, but I would like to see it mix more, but we'll see it right now because this is going to be more dramatic here. So we're going to twist it so that we opened up the thing and then like now as we shake it, it kind of mixes it all. I mean, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. I think you kind of have to, there's like a little chamber. It seems like there's a little chamber in here that when you twist it, it opens the chamber and then you sort of have to shake it to get it, to get it kind of combined. This is the Jason FU one? This is the Jason FU one, yeah. That's good, yeah. I mean, that tastes like a bourbon sour. Here's the thing. This one actually tastes, if somebody gave me this over ice, I might not be able to tell between this and a fresh cocktail. Maybe not. I mean, it's really, the thing is, is that there's a lot, this is like bourbon, lemon. He put a little orange juice in here, cane sugar and blackstrap bitters. It's funny is that the lemon, orange juice, and bourbon together actually make it taste like it has honey in it. But yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's good. So I'm assuming that the, the thing down here was the lemon and the orange juice all in one because orange juice oxidizes like that. Um, yeah, so there you have it. I mean, bottled cocktails, I gotta say, pretty impressed with this drink smith stuff, to tell you the truth. I don't know what more to say. You got any more questions, Marius? Any more musings? No. Uh, well, every time we say drinks, myth, I hear drinks, smith, not myth. I hear like drinks, myth. Yeah. Yeah, but I think I mean obviously that's a play on like drinks, smith. Right. Like someone who smith is smiths is drinks. Someone who smiths drinks. A drinksmith, like a blacksmith. Yeah, that's what it's I a hear. Drinksmith. Yeah. yeah, I think is that's that what a, that's is. Is a drinksmith a real word? Drinksmith? Yeah. I don't think so, but I think that they're just like kind of using it as a. It's like a, like a slang term for for a drink expert. Mm -hmm. But they they but they but they spell it like myth. That's what I I wonder. Drinks myth. Drink Smith makes more sense than drinks myth. Which one? <laughs> drink Smith. Yeah, makes more sense than drink Smith. Expert in, than drink myth. Yeah. Like drinks myth. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. I'll ask them though. I don't know about it. But uh, but uh, I, I do like these. These these were actually really good. I'm impressed with these. Um, the other ones, you know. Mm. Good try. Good night. Pretty, pretty, pretty good, as uh, Larry David would say. I don't know. I guess that's it. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys got something out of this video instead of just, you know, watching me get tipsy on bottled cocktails. Uh, if you like this channel, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, ring that bell, and uh, and uh, comment below. And I don't know. I'll see you guys in the next on the next, you know, ridiculous video we decide to shoot. Right? Yep. Right. Or on, on Barfly. Or on Barfly, yeah. You can go to our other channel. But, you know, chances are, if you know about this channel, you know the other channel. The Big Daddy channel. 
you know? So go over there and hit, you know, hit subscribe over there too. Subscribe to all our stuff, but more importantly, watch it from beginning to end. And I will see you guys on another time.